Sometimes he leads us in a way that we would never go and he changes our opportunities in a way that only he can form them so we can get a result that only God can bring. And what God's doing in you is something that you couldn't have predicted so you don't really have eyes to totally see it. And that's hard because you haven't been here. You haven't done this before. And John said, blessed are those who believe and have not seen. You're going to be blessed for believing that God's leading you into something new that you don't even fully understand but you've said yes to. Well, I have a prophetic word in perspective this week, and I want to tell you that there's a change happening right now. I see it this way. The winds of change are blowing. Pentecost season, this Pentecost is going to be, it's coming up in a couple of weeks. It's going to be a breaking open of a cocoon of change for many people's lives. Change is uncomfortable, but it's an inevitable part of life. But sometimes God puts us in a condensed season where he changes so many things or so many transitions in our life. Maybe it's for you, it's school, career, church, friends marriage, you know, being single to marriage or being having children, or maybe it's uh, the house you live in, whatever it is. But as believers, we're called to navigate the various seasons of change and transition with faith and trust in God's guidance. We know that, but a lot of times God's really silent and change. It's kind of like fasting. A lot of people think they're going to fast. It's going to be the most glorious moments of their life, but they realize I'm just really hungry. And then they have a breakthrough after the fast. Well, a lot of times in seasons of change, we think we're going to have the breakthrough in the change, but we have the breakthrough uh, you know, there's a, there's a beginning and middle and an end, and we don't usually see what God's doing until sometimes the end. And the Bible is filled with stories and teachings that reveal the transformative power of God and the impact of embracing changes he brings into our life. But there's a season of change that God has been cocooning many of you for, and you're about to find yourself coming out of this cocoon, and it's going to surprise you because some of you have been in change or transition for so long, and you can't see in front of you anymore. It's so dark in that cocoon, you can't see what God's going to do. You forgot some of the bigger promises, or you're not keeping focused on them. And the scripture reminds us that life is a dynamic journey and that change is an essential aspect of our growth and development. I love Ecclesiastes 3. I read it a lot. In verse 1 through 8, it tells us that there's a time for everything under heaven, emphasizing the importance of embracing the various seasons of life, whether it's a time to plant, a time to uproot, a time to mourn, a time to dance. God's actively involved in orchestrating all of the shifts and working. He really is working in each phase And he wants to fulfill his divine purpose in you. When you surrender your life and say, God, you can do anything, which is usually what we do when we become a Christian. You can do anything, God. Sometimes he leads us in a way that we would never go. And he changes our opportunities in a way that only he can form them so we can get a result that only God can bring. And what God's doing in you is something that you couldn't have predicted. So you don't really have eyes to totally see it. And that's hard because you haven't been here. You haven't done this before. And John said, blessed are those who believe and have not seen. You're, you're going to be blessed for believing that God's leading you into something new that you don't even fully understand, but you've said yes to. And Isaiah 43, of course, I talk about this a lot, but don't dwell on the past, but look forward to new things God's doing, especially he promises to make a way in the wilderness and provide rivers in the desert. And this illustrates really his transformative power who can bring you in the times of change and renewal, even in the most likely situations, like it may be a wilderness, but he brings you like a vision of change that actually brings the water or the food you need to survive right now and to thrive right now. But I had a dream where this dream was so symbolic. There's all these angels and they were coming down from heaven through a lot of storms and they were in the darkest part of the night. So it was like in the middle of the night through terrible storms, almost like when you've been seeing one of these disasters that's happened in a city, there's a lot of tornado activity in the middle of the night. It was like that, but they were delivering trophies to people while they were sleeping. And when I woke up, I knew this was the very thing of rewarding those who are willing to believe for God's fullness and for what God wants to do, that it was those who had surrendered their agendas, where they lived, their careers, what they were, where they were going to church, many other main plot points of life, to the will and divinity of God's plan. And God's going to reward those who've made the surrender. And the reward's going to start to come even before the change happens. You're going to see a reward of life, something about the nearness of God and the Holy Spirit and the winds of change are coming. So we're coming into the season of Pentecost. So just a few weeks from now, we'll be celebrating the biblical holiday of Pentecost. And I feel like just like what happened in the Bible, when the coming of the Holy Spirit, he came on the day of Pentecost and it marks a significant time of change for the early Christian church. We see this in Acts 2, 1 through 4, that this Pentecost is going to represent a crossing over into the new for many believers. The Holy Spirit's going to bring clarity around the Pentecost season for many who followed him and a lot of transition and change, but still are in the dark about it. God's voice and purpose is going to become clearer as we read the Bible. And he wants us to spend time with him, pray with him, feel connected to him. He wants to guide and empower us through times of change. 
you need to keep yielded because oftentimes right before the breakthrough moments begin to manifest in the natural, the enemy comes to short circuit the process or we get impatient ourselves and we want to solve our own problems. Remember Ishmael and Isaac. And so we don't want to jump out of this discomfort of the metamorphosis process, but we want to trust him. Just hang on a little longer because your change is already coming. It's already sent. It's on its way. You're almost there. So the Bible is, I mean, absolutely replete with examples of individuals who surrendered to the embrace of transition that God placed them in and experienced unimaginable results because they trusted God. The stories of Abraham, Joseph, Ruth, Peter, and Paul, they all demonstrate this incredible impact of surrendering to God's plan and walking in new paths that he's laid out for us. And Abraham is one of my favorites because he left his comfort zone. He totally stepped into unfamiliar territory, trusting God to guide him to a place of the abundant blessing and the greater purpose that God prophesied. In Genesis 12, 1 through 3, Joseph, despite facing hardships and betrayals, remained faithful during his times of transition and ultimately experienced God's favor and provision. You can see that in Genesis 45 through 4 through 8. Ruth's unwavering loyalty and trust in God's providence led her to find favor with Boaz, resulting in extraordinary lineages, including King David and Jesus Christ, which we see that in Matthew 1, 5 through 6. Well, similarly, Peter and Paul, both from the New Testament, provide powerful examples of those who embrace transition that God had for them. Peter, a simple fisherman, left everything familiar to follow Jesus, and he eventually became a key leader or the rock of the church. Matthew 4, 18 through 20, Acts 2, 14 through 41, 3, 1 through 10, Paul once led a zealous persecution of the church, and he experienced the most dramatic transformation after encountering Jesus and went on to become one of the most influential apostles and evangelists in all time. We see this especially in Acts 9, 3 through 6, and 13 through 28. So there's a cocoon phase we look at that even they went through that we're going through as well. And I love the cocoon reminder, the transformation and metamorphosis. We're in spring and we see caterpillars all around. I've been seeing them a lot. I have one on my shirt when I was walking the other day and I showed the girls and of course my little girls took it and they brought it straight to a plant so it can finish its process. But the process of caterpillar transforming into a butterfly within a cocoon is the most powerful metaphor Christians experience during times of transition. It's been used and preached about since the early days of Christianity. And this metamorphosis consists of three main stages. And I want to remind you of them so that you can enter in again into whatever stage you're in with hope and faith that God's in control. Well, the first stage is surrender. Just as a caterpillar must surrender the process of transformation within the cocoon, we also have to surrender our plans and desires to God. We have to allow him to shape and mold us according to his will. Then we have the transformation phase. We're inside the cocoon and all of a sudden our hands don't look the same and our body doesn't look the same. We're undergoing a complete metamorphosis being transformed into something we don't recognize. And as we trust God and embrace his transitions, he brings new things into our life and he renews and transforms us from the inside out. So it's not the outside in, it's like something's happening inside that you can't always describe, you can't always relate to others, but this enables us to become more like Christ and really so we can fulfill our God-given destinies. Then there's the emergence, and that's where many of you are coming into right now if you're not already there. And this is when the transformation is complete. Praise the Lord. And the butterfly emerges from the cocoon, ready to soar into its new life. And, you know, when we allow God to work in us through seasons of change, we are going to emerge stronger. and We're going to uh, emerge more resilient. We're going to be equipped to step into the new. I mean, the new chapter that God has for you is completely different than what you could have planned for yourself. And many of you are on the cusp of emerging. You're going to emerge really soon. And it's not very light right now, but there's going to be so much light in this next season. And you do have wings and you will fly. And sometimes we don't feel like we're ever going to fly again or we're never going to fly for the first time. But I want to warn you against resisting God's plan for a second. You don't want to give up. You don't want to resist God. You don't want to fail to listen, even when you don't understand God. I feel like the story of Jonah serves as the best cautionary tale in the whole season about the potential consequences of not surrendering God's plan and not walking out the transition he asked for us because Jonah's initial refusal to obey God's call not only put his own life in danger, but also endangered all the people around him. Jonah 1, 1 through 17 really shows you this. When we resist God's plans and his transitions, we really can face hardship and difficulties. That was never God's intention for us. We could have totally avoided it if we just obeyed. I know I've gone through seasons like that where I've not obeyed God and I've not really like followed my inner instinct, my the Holy Spirit's prompts within me. And then all of a sudden I'm in a place where I led myself to, not that God led me to. And I have to reap the consequences of that at times. And I know many of you can relate to that. But we follow God. We trust him in these times of transition and the change, surrendering our plan, saying, here you go, God. We're going to embrace this journey that's totally different 
than what we would have let ourselves into. We're going to get a, a, a truly supernatural God result in our life. And throughout the Bible, we see numerous examples of how God has used winds of change, times of change, seasons of change to shape the lives of those who love him. Well, when we trust him and his wisdom and his guidance, we can confidently navigate these changes and embrace the growth and development that they bring. And if you have a declaration for this season, let it be, I choose to follow God wholeheartedly, knowing that his plans are always ultimately for my good and for the good of the world around me. This is also reflected in Jeremiah 29, 11. And I want to encourage you to make that your declaration this season and hold on for just that little bit more. Hold on for a few more minutes, a few more hours, a few more days, because God is about to cause something to emerge in your life that you couldn't have even predicted. You couldn't even said, I mean, maybe you knew that the areas you were pointed out, the industry, the calling, the people, the marriage, the family, the church, whatever it is that your life's pointing out, that God's giving you some revelation, but you will never be able to fully imagine what God has in store for, for you when you follow him. Ephesians 3.20 is very clear about that. And I want to encourage you, don't even lie to yourself or pretend to yourself that you know or that you're, everything's okay or that you know exactly how to you know, walk in the season because maybe you don't. Maybe you need that dependence on God. Maybe you need to press in a little longer. Maybe you need to listen a little bit more so that you can get the fullness, again, of his God result. Thanks for watching today. I want to encourage you to visit our sponsor at Birch Gold, who helps you to secure your Roth IRA or your 401k into a commodities market of precious metals, especially gold and silver and platinum. I want to encourage you to get their free information packet today because the market is so unstable right now. I hate the instability that we're in. Financially, we're headed towards more recession. The interest rates have just gone up again. But you know what's not changing very much or is only increasing is precious metals, especially gold and silver. So I want to encourage you, go to birchgold.com forward slash Sean Bowles, and they're going to teach you with a free information packet on how you can secure your assets and your future and your retirement. We are doing just that. And I love the fact that we're getting different results because we're following a much better plan. And they're using a commonly unknown loophole in the IRS that helps you to get the best benefit possible. Birch Gold is one of the leaders in this industry. They are so uh, full of a great reputation that you can't find a negative thing about them. At least I couldn't when I looked them up when I first came into a relationship with them. So go to birchgold.com forward slash Sean Bowles and you can support this show, but also you can support your future. Thanks for watching today. Hit subscribe, hit notifications. And I'll see you next time.